Good morning, Nicole Murard, my accountability partner. Good morning. What's today? Tuesday? Happy Tuesday? Happy Tuesday. Yeah, happy Tuesday. Big show today. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> the, the best way to... Hey. You know we're all about giving nuggets. The best way to hook a listener is to make a statement and laugh. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I mean, I'm hooked. I have no idea what we're talking about today. <laughs> I know. And then pause. People just, Nicole, people overthink everything. Nicole, I got to time out my script. I got to think it all out. No. Just make a hook, laugh, and then pause. Yep. <laughs> and drink your coffee. I mean. <laughs> the secrets to morning show success. Yes. Yeah. Where'd you learn that nugget? <laughs> I'm old. Remember 1979? You guys, oh, you guys reminded me yesterday, <laughs> the day of the eclipse. Yes, yeah. Yes. Oh, segueing. Did I did. Yeah, segueing all over this morning. I took a picture of the eclipse yesterday. I'm going to show you a little bit later this morning. Uh, let's let the audience and let you know what we're talking about today. So, uh, I stumbled across it. There's that freaking. Uh, I got to get that one out of the playlist there. Um, uh, <laughs> Stumbled upon a post yesterday where uh, a, a person posted on LinkedIn, uh, social media, don't post Eclipse stuff today, don't post Eclipse stuff today. Like basically if you're a brand, you should not be posting social, you know, but, but be posting about the Eclipse. And I had a different opinion. So I offered it and it, it a lot of people interacted with it. So I, I want to speak about it today. The question really being, Nicole, when a big global event happens, should we be posting about it on social media? If you're a brand, you know, like 911 or certain holidays, brands sometimes get involved. And mm -hmm. there's maybe a discussion to be had around that. Uh, did you know the moon, Nicole Bernard, is going to get a time zone? Uh, no, I did not know that. Yeah, so I figured it, keeping in the theme of the eclipse, I want to share with you that the moon's going to get a time zone. Yeah, wouldn't that be for people being on it are people up there it's a great question <laughs> you are absolutely correct anticipating humans are going to be making their way to mars and that wow. you know the the you know the uh, interplanetary travel is around the corner eventually so it's like okay so what happens when somebody goes on the moon and hangs out there for a while how are we going to delineate time with that so Right. I'm gonna share a little bit about that nugget stuff that I learned here in the last few in the last few days in my in my readings because I like to be a well-read human being. Yeah, no, that's cool. I didn't hear that. Yes, I figured we could uh, maybe throw on the table. So today's accountability check in the Colbert Art is seven habits of an accountable human. Hmm. I think they're obvious, but I think also sometimes these things are worth discussing because just again, our goal here is to. You know, give people that friendly voice, maybe to move them throughout their day on their accountability journey. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a creator spotlight. I believe John Swiston's joining us today. He made a great post yesterday about uh, about Mondays aren't for thinking, Mondays are for doing. But Nicole, what do you do if you're stuck on Monday? Mm. And how do you get going? Yeah. Right? So John had a post yesterday that I pulled up and I knocked on his door and said, hey, do you want to join the show? So I think he's joining the show. I think around 7.30, 7.40, I think he's going to knock on our door and join up here today. I got some lab clips from my conversation with Ryan Sullivan yesterday. Yes, I bet that was awesome. I wanted to catch that one, so I'm glad you have some, uh, some clips. I got some, I, I went through the good stuff and I got some clips and then I can encourage the audience to go watch the full show. But Ryan's awesome, Nicole. Ryan is yeah. I'll tell you what, you know, I know you have a podcast and you, you, you've been successfully growing it. Speaking of growing, I want to talk about your stats you revealed yesterday. Uh, Ryan helps people. You know what he does, Nicole? Bottom line, he helps people prevent or stop podcast fade. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. Right. So if you're somebody who's like, I want to start a podcast and you start going on it and then you end up maybe not fulfilling on that, you, you might as well not even... Like that you might as well not even got started to start with. So Ryan will sit down with you at the beginning, really ask you a bunch of great questions, ensure you're ready to get started. Uh, and then once you get started, he's he's like that coach who's, he's like an accountability coach, like you and me, Nicole, where he will, he's like, hey, Nicole, uh, when are we recording this week? You're like, oh, uh, right. Mm -hmm. All right. And then a couple weeks later, he's like, hey, Nicole, when are we recording this week? You're like, oh, right. Because I think what happens and, you know, don't don't want to call you out. I just want to call an obvious is that life gets in the way and 
you know, you're like, oh, geez, Keith, I haven't got my bubbles and biz one done this week, or I got to get it done next week. And sometimes we just have a hard time doing it ourselves, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And I mean, after, you know, have like doing it for a while too, it gets not, ty- not tiring because it's not tiring, but I don't know. It loses as some of its allure in the beginning, just like anything, you know? So it's like, got to keep going if you really want to utilize it. You, you actually described his exact words. He's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, in the beginning days, it's fun. The allure's there. And then after a little while, oh, it, yeah. it brushes off. Mm-hmm. And, and his comments were, Nicole, if it becomes a job for you, then you should not be podcasting. Yeah, that's a good point. Like you really need to be enjoying it, right? So mm-hmm. as I woke up this morning at before five, I'm like, I'm loving this. <laughs> Looking out west at my friend Nicole thinking... Oh my God, Keith, are we doing this again? Week four, five, six? Yes, we are. Because I will also tell you, Ryan was, you're going to learn something in the clip around how, how Ryan discovered you and I. Oh, cool. Yes. Which I think probably leads to, well, let's go about it. So yesterday, Nicole, you revealed on your LinkedIn feed, you're on a mission here, you're posting daily, and I'm, I'm seeing your results. But you yourself had a revelation yesterday, did you not? Yeah, totally. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I, I hit 3,000 connections. Um, and then my, what shocked me the most was the impressions that have gone up over the week. Like I've only been doing this, but I started last Monday. Yes. Um, so eight days to be day eight or nine, whatever. Um, like it's over 3000 and before that it would sit at like, I don't know, any, depending on when I would post, which was not consistently, um, 100 to like 300 impressions. So it's gone up so much. Nope. It's, It's crazy. Yeah. And just, yeah, connecting with really cool people, get all kinds of like messages now. I just, oh, I went to send you a text yesterday. Somebody, we'll have to get him on the show. He asked me to be on his YouTube channel. It's got over a million subscribers. Do it. Yeah. And then I want to have him on, obviously, because he's also too. Top LinkedIn voice. So. Exceptional. So what do you attribute, Nicole, to your growth? Um, uh, Just being consistent, honestly. I mean, and I, I think too, like what you were saying, like we overthink everything. And I think that's where I was getting stuck. Like, it's funny. I, I mean, I'm marketing. It's way easier for me to market someone else's business than my own. So I was like, oh, but I need to like have a, like everything figured out. And I've just been taking it day by day. Like what has been going on? What feels right? What are people talking about? What yes? What value do I have to share? Because even yesterday wasn't like a huge value, but people love cheering others on. And so like that post got tons of engagement yesterday. You know, it's yes. just, you know, we like, to see other people succeeding, which is always fun. That I think your last point is the most relevant. People like to see other people succeeding. And mm-hmm. if you can find the confidence to make that first post, and to your point, Nicole, not overthink it. Mm-hmm. And then have the confidence to do it again and do it again. And I'm loving that you're seeing the results. I, 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 that mm-hmm. I'm also noticing, because we're working together, I'm no, also noticing your engagement on other people's posts you're seeing it you're seeing a big return on that too aren't you yeah definitely and you have mentioned that before and like i've heard other people say that you know i mean obviously they want to see us be social because that really is what it's all about but but genuinely be social you know not just jump on there to like yes pump up your whatever but uh genuinely connecting with people so yeah it's been awesome it's been really cool it's hard though like it's mm-hmm. hard, oh, yeah. to, it's hard to go and mingle amongst other communities and post and interact and then go back in the next moment and post again. And I can see why I had a great conversation with a colleague, a friend on, on Sunday. And, and he's like, yeah, Keith, I, I had a, I had a big post and, and a lot of people liked it. And I, I was, that's great. And I, I didn't want to be dismissive of that. I, I wanted and it, the, the, it wasn't the time and place for what I wanted to say next, Nicole, which right. was, Imagine if, if, if you could then go and engage on 20, 30 posts that day, how much more engagement you'd have on your rich posts. Because what happens is people come back to you because I've noticed it myself. And it's funny because it's just math, right? You make one post and push it out. You hope that a lot of people see it. Or mm-hmm. you can walk up to 50 different, I'll use the metaphor of 50. You can walk up to 50 different group discussions. Yeah and interact with 50 different group of discussions and what's naturally happening, Nicole, well, at least 50 people are seeing you. Mm-hmm. Yep. So totally. I, I, I love seeing your growth. I, I'm experiencing the same kind of growth. I know we both are. I think it's very, uh, 
it's related a lot to this show, frankly. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that it is, and I know when I spoke some things with Ryan yesterday, we'll reveal some things on some clips coming up around how this is, like this is working how I thought it was going to work. Mm-hmm. People, people get up in the morning uh, and they have, humans have morning habits. We yeah. either turn our radio on or we turn our TV on or we check our socials or all of the above or one of the three. Yeah. And if you're trying to get inside of a human habit or get in front of a human habit showing up regularly, you're going to start seeing results. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's really yeah, true. Yeah, it's funny. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I've, I think I think people, I was thinking of this yesterday, mm-hmm. actually, like, of, you know, like lead magnets or trying to create more awareness. Like a lot of people yes. will do, you know, like an email form or an ebook or, you know, just different yes. types yeah. of content, which are great. Yeah. And I was thinking of that and I was like, oh, well, this is starting to take our brand awareness that is like our catalyst like our tool you know what i mean which is super fun and it's different you know not everybody's doing this because you know it's it's hard hard yeah it is hard and you know it's funny because i don't i take it for granted i'm I'm gonna suspect you do because you get up and do something every single day anyway since i've met you you're like i'm going i'm going and i want to talk about your ultra marathon coming up here for moments as well but i'm going and i'm like Okay, well, and, you, and you're a Goggin disciple, which is I'm going. It's funny. It was a quote yesterday on LinkedIn, and he's like, "It was a paraphrasing it. Uh, don't overthink it. You know, just get going. Right. Uh, just do it. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a popular <laughs> saying from a company. I'm not sure of their name, but. Yeah, just down the road from you, maybe. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then he said, if, if, if it's a dream you think you can accomplish, then your dream isn't big enough. Yep. Yep. It's true. Isn't it though? And that's where sometimes I, like I had my chat with Ryan yesterday, awesome chat. And then I had some chats with some folks after and, and, uh, I know people look at me with, um, uh, <laughs> curious squirrely eyes when I paint my vision for what I'm building because people, mm-hmm. I'll be honest, Nicole, people think small. Mm-hmm. They do. Yeah. People naturally think small and I don't yeah. know. I, I struggle I'm of the attitude, Nicole, if you're going to go rob a bank, like what are you robbing it for a million bucks for? Go rob it for five or for 10 or 20 or a right. hundred, right? And I had somebody say this to me back in my old world, Nicole, uh, who, he was a guy who was in it. Here's a good business to kind of weave into it. An M&A guy, a merged and acquisition guy. He's like, yeah, I have no time to go buy $5 million companies. I was like, oh, he goes, because the same amount of work that goes into buying a $5 million company that goes into buying a $50 million company. Yes. Oh, it's so true. That's so true. Yeah, I saw something the other day or it was like it, either way you're uncomfortable. So you're either uncomfortable like being where you're at or you're uncomfortable going into that new phase that you're not sure what's going to happen yet. So either way, you're uncomfortable. Like, you're yes. saying, like either way, you got to work. Exactly. So. Exactly. 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 OK, listen, let's take a quick uh, minute break for coffee and then I want to come back. I want to talk to you about your ultra marathon training, how that's going and and and, and so forth. Uh, we'll talk a little bit, maybe perhaps my audacious goal. And then I found an article, Nicole, that talks about this. I was thinking about you the whole time. So, which is why I want to bring it up for our next segment, move over marathons, the ultra endurance sports that are redefining fitness. And <laughs> I'm actually going to give you, uh, a new list of things to do so that we can recreate the Nicole Bernard goal achievement, uh, uh, wall. And then mm-hmm. what we'll do as Business Athlete Nation is that we're gonna we're gonna chart Nicole's journey over the next few years as she's going to. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Quite laugh at me? You mean I'm just kidding? No, not at all. Actually, we're gonna cheer you on as you go on these all these new ultra marathon ultras ultra journeys. I'm gonna hook it there. Let's go for less than a minute. We'll come back and we'll get okay. into it. Okay. Awesome. Hang okay. tight, everybody. I'm gonna go and put this on. Boom, boom.
right, we're back here this morning. Keith and Nicole here, mornings in the lab, 17 minutes after the hour. Uh, yeah, I'm like old radio guy, just giving you guys the time here. So if you sit listening to us, uh, we are going to chat a little bit. So as we know, Nicole is a ultra athlete. Uh, I met Nicole when she, when I, when, as I was starting mornings in the, uh, live in the lab months ago, I, I met Nicole as she was on her journey of doing 48 thousand miles in 48 hours and i was like who is this human being doing this work got to meet her spent some time with her thoroughly enjoyed engaging with her and i'm like hey nicole let's do some work together so next thing you know we're on the show together doing mornings in the lab and now she is on a journey nicole bernard to do your ultra marathon coming up on june 22nd first of all before we get into this article that i want to share with you how's your training going for that and and where would you say your stage is right now i know that we've been talking about this 100 day journey and you know as we get closer to it i'm sure you know our discussion and the activity is going to ramp up but where do you find yourself on your journey right now as you're working towards june 22nd nicole yeah um it's, it's good like it's been a little not as uh precise as I would want it to be just because things have been, you know, we've had an exchange student, things have been a That's, little, I was wondering out about of the that. ordinary. Yeah. Yep. Out of the ordinary right now um, for the last few weeks. But I think what was good was starting with, I had, you know, I did the Goggins challenge a few weeks ago. So kind of starting with that pain um, <laughs> reminded me like <laughs> what my, I'm capable of when it like situations yeah. really suck. So yes. that was good. So, um, and then I was slightly injured. Um, I mean, I was just really sore, maybe, I don't know, but I'm feeling a lot better. And so I've, the last few times I've been running, like that's been great. So it's been really good. It's not like as formal, I guess, as I would say, yes. like, but yeah. she leaves Sunday and then I, I will be like four weeks in this weekend. And so I'm going to really start like doubling down and just really being a lot more, um, diligent. Yes, thank you. And structure, um, yeah. Yes, yeah, structure. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, so, and I also, like, my co-ed season started on Saturday, so that was fun. So, you know, getting, like, a lot of playing time in soccer, um, which helps, too, just kind of, and it's just super fun. Um, so, yeah, it's going great. Like, I, yeah, that's a really roundabout update. That's all, but I did notice. Uh, hey, good morning, Ange from Manitoba. Good morning, Riley down from I think Riley's my, my cousin Riley's down in San Diego. I believe tuning in. Oh, that's awesome. hey, Nicole, do you find yourself? So I noticed you're back playing soccer. So did that start this week as well? It did. It started on Saturday, which yeah, I love. That's going to help with your ultra marathon training as well. I'm thinking. Oh, for sure. There's parts of my body that are sore that I really forgot about <laughs> <laughs> that you use that are not a straight running line. <laughs> No kidding. No kidding. No kidding. So th there's this, listen, the social media has made the world so small. We all can share what we're doing. We all can interact with what we're doing. And these new sports, these new events start getting together because all these micro cultures, right? It's like, Hey, let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Next, you know, you got a thousand people doing this. So, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of ultra sports is more popular than ever. And, you know, from 4,000 kilometer bike rides to 100 mile runs. Um, and, and, but the question is why? And, you know, Dr. Carla Mahan, a sport and exercise psychologist, says, you know, there are just a specific aspects to physiological, physical challenge like this that offer a mix of endorphins, feeling fitter and observing progress. Like that feeling of doing something crazy, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's some things that you can consider doing. So I know you're already an ultra marathoner, but this idea of an ultra, ultra running, the iconic mountain event is the UTMB, the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. Yep. which comprises 42 races a year on five continents with 50 kilometer, 100 kilometer, and sometimes 100 mile routes. Nicole. Yep. Mm-hmm. All the people that run these every year, I'm just like, oh my God. We got to get some of these folks on our show, man. All nonstop mm -hmm. with considerable elevation. Uh, and then this one, even more testing is the Tour de, is the Tour de Jean, a 205 mile circuit. Is 205 that... miles. Yes, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't get it. Oh, we'll have to get to um, my best friend growing up. Like we met on the soccer field when we were 12. Her husband just ran a hundred miler this weekend. Um, so he, that was his first one. And he's the first person I ever ran a half marathon with back in 2017. Um, and he's just an amazing human. Um, I should have him come on the show and talk yes. about hundred miles. Cause that's, that's insane. And that like, again, that was his first one. So. Oh, and look at this one, Nicole. The marathon, de, 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 de Sable, held in Morocco each April, coming up. Uh, runners carry food, 
bedding, and equipment and cover yeah. around 155 miles over six daily stages of 10 to 50 miles in singeing heat. Like I, I, I was reading this and I just couldn't wrap my head around this whole, this whole idea of carrying your bedding, your equipment. I was having a hell of a time climbing up Mount Kilimanjaro, not even carrying myself because the porters were never mind running for 155 miles. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, ultra cycling. So ultra cycling, uh, fast, nonstop, carrying your stuff. So, you know, these 45, 45, uh, uh, 45 Southwest covers 2,700 miles from Krakow to Tarifa. The North Cape, uh, 4,000, 2,500 miles, Nicole, from the Alps oh. to northern, uh, the northern Europeans, northern tip. And then uh, you have uh, the Pan Celtic race. Uh, a thousand miles, fourteen hundred miles. Like I just, can you wrap your head around that? No, I really can't. I mean, it's it, yeah. Humans are amazing. I, I I I cannot even fathom trying to do something like that. And then you have swimming, right? You 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 hear about people doing the English Channel, you know, the twenty one plus miles from England to France. Uh, you yeah. have the Lake Geneva Swimming Association, which arranges crossings from Lu Luzanne to Evian, eight miles. Uh, you know, you have the Loch Ness swim 22 and a half miles. <laughs> like this whole idea of it, it, ultra swimming is long distance swimming is 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 more popular than ever. And then this one got struck me. Adventure racing. Mm -hmm. Dramatic remote backdrops, uh, kayaks, horseback, teams, you know, whitewater paddling, all these extreme stuff happening around the world, these adventures, ski mountaineering. Is another one. Uh, the point is, there is no shortage of ultra activities for humans to do on the planet these days. Uh, which, for for humans that are looking forward to or looking for some motivation or accountability in the morning, I think all you have to do is wrap your head around considering doing a thousand mile run, thousand mile walk. Right. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Like so, yeah. When I see people like this, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, thirty one miles is nothing. <laughs> exactly. I went for my run yesterday, Nicole Bernard. You know how much I love running. Mm -hmm. Love it. How'd it uh, go? Well, I'm not. I, I dawdled my way through it. I first of all did my 45 minute uh, pro cyclist ride on my Peloton, and then I then I got off the old biker, and uh, I think I did about 23 kilometers on that 45 minute ride. 23, 24 kilometers, I believe it would have been. And then I don't even know where my phone is. And then I uh, went out for a run, and I dawdled my way, but I did it. I hated mm -hmm. every second of it, but I did it. And I guess that's the point, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, eventually it's funny. I bet you'll like running at some point, like the that's more what, you do it. That's what Lauren says. I'm like, I don't know. I just absolutely hate the whole thing. There's nothing about it that I enjoy. There's nothing about it that I enjoy, Nicole, except for knowing that I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and the endorphins that come with doing something that I hate. And I guess that's my motivation, which is maybe like you with strength training, right? You're like, I hate doing yeah. this, but okay, I'm going to do a squat. I hate doing this, but okay, I'm going to do a, 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 a deadlift, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's what we do. It's what we do. Okay. Let's, uh, before I believe John Swiston may or may not join us. I have not heard from John this morning. I want to, oh, there is a, yes, he's uh, going to be joining us here in about 15 minutes or so. So while John's jumping in, why don't I run a couple of clips from the show yesterday? I got a few five minute clips here with Ryan Sullivan. They're Nuggets Nation. If you're tuning in, if you're thinking about starting a podcast or wanting to hear some of the things that we're doing here on the show and how Ryan discovered us, I think this would be a good time for me to throw this on. So I'm going to throw this on here, Nicole. Let's, let's, let, let's hear Ryan Sullivan in my chat from yesterday. Here's okay. let's see what clip this is here. The opinions you offer to people, the comments you offer are very helpful. You say, I have energy. I'm like, dude, this guy's got energy. He's like, I want to help. It's like, you got a podcast? You want to start? Come knock on my doors. The, is the impression that I get from you. And then when I talked to Rob Ogle today, Rob was just talking. He's like, Ryan Sullivan's awesome, man. Ryan's been nothing but a great help to him and et cetera, et cetera. So the reputation certainly precedes yourself, my friend. Yeah, I appreciate that. And it's also, this is the thing, like, right? Like what you're doing right now is, is difficult to do. And it's difficult to do it every single day, especially, right? So if I see somebody or come across somebody who is telling yeah. me they want to do something like this, right? Maybe it's yes. a podcast. Yeah. Or for us, it's mostly pre-recorded podcasts. Live streams even yeah. more difficult. Has its own yeah. challenges. That is a rare thing, right? Like I reach over a million people per year on LinkedIn to be able to run the business that I run and get the wow. amount of clients that I get. Yeah, so it's like whatever, 80,000 80, people a month or something like that. So it's I yeah. need to reach that many people for such a small amount of people 
to want to be a Rob Ogle or, you know, any of the multitude myriad of people that we've worked with, like I could name them off. That is, yes. these people are, are delving into something that's not easy to do. So that's why partially, yes, I know what podcasting is. I can see it before they see it. But for the people who yeah. already see it, I'm like, oh, that's my person right there. Like, I'm going to give you all the energy in the world because you're so rare. You're such a rare type of person. You must love when those people come across your desk because what you just said, right? They're just, they're rare. They want to embrace because this, because the podcast industry is, I'll paint a broad brush is often, what's the term of po podcast fade? How many people fade out after 80, 80 somewhat percent of people start their, start their podcast and they die. Like they just end. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to, I think that's the, that's an accurate stat. Yeah. What, what, why is that Ryan? Is it because somebody gets all excited going in, they start doing it and they recognize nobody's listening and they're like, ah, oh, what the hell's the point of this? Yeah. That's some of it. I think it happens as I actually think you could prevent a lot of it in the beginning because when uh -huh. people create podcasts based on excitement and because mm -hmm. sometimes because they found the, sometimes the best products, I'll say it like this, the best products yes. are created by solving a problem that you have. Yes. So the best podcasts typically are created by solving a or by creating content that isn't already out there. Now, if mm -hmm. you have an idea for something that is already out there and then mm -hmm. and you're just getting excited purely based on the fact that you want to do this, that is different <laughs> than creating a concept based on a gap in the market. Right. So I think for what I am bullish on is the planning in the beginning and hiring somebody in our case to set, to sit back and say, maybe this idea isn't that original, or maybe the persona, uh -huh. maybe you haven't yeah. even mapped out the persona. Like maybe you have no idea who you're speaking to, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. I'm just saying, is there a list of things in the beginning that we could go through to increase the chances of success? Yes, there are. And that's what happens when you work with somebody like, I, the mechanic looks at my car way different than I look at my car, right? They can just see things that I can't see. So it's yes. a pretty similar analogy, right? Where a doctor is the same way. Like you can web MD. Right? So this first clip, Nicole Bernard, where he talks about the value that he brings in. And we, I see we got John's sister. Hey, John, John's in the green room waiting for us. We're bringing John in a few moments to talk about Mondays. So if you're tuning in right now in the lab 30 minutes into our show, we're talking the problem to tackle Mondays. We've got creator spotlight. John Swiss is going to join us here in a few moments. Uh, we're going to shine the light on John, create some content around the discussion around Mondays. But right now we're talking with Ryan Sullivan. He joined me yesterday live in the lab with Keith Billis. And one of the questions, Nicole, that you know I asked him was, hey, rip apart my show, uh, you know, rip apart what we're doing. And then and, and then through our chat, he 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 um, admitted how he found me and found us. And I think this mm -hmm. goes back to the start of our conversation, which is where you have seen your networking results go up, your interactions go up. And this is kind of the secret we're going to hear on this clip here, but what's happened by us discovering this morning show. So let's just check this out. I think perhaps this is a good time to ask for your help uh, about, you know, what I'm trying to do here with my big goal and talk a little bit about that because I'm going to reveal some secrets to you and to the nation um, that you probably know about Ryan, but, but, but I, I want to share with you what I've learned here in the last few, in the last few weeks. So we, humans have habits. Like you said, your girlfriend gets up in the morning and she checks for TikTok. You know, humans since the dawn of time have got up in the morning and turned on what the morning show on the radio or the TV or CNN or something like that. Right. So I've been watching for months, Ryan, that my, my, my LinkedIn blows up every morning between basically 6 a.m. till 9 a.m. Kind of. So I'm here in central Canada. You're in, so basically 7 till 10, same time. Right. So I'm like, yeah. hey, every, there's, that's what all the LinkedIn activity is. And I noticed that that's when everybody comes checks on my profile view because I make a comment and Ryan's like, oh, who's this Keith guy? So he sees Keith. He goes, clicks on his name and goes to his profile. So I said to myself one day, I am now going to stream in the morning like a typical morning show. So when I go leave a comment on Ryan's feed, Ryan's going to go, oh, who's this Keith guy? And then Ryan goes and clicks on my button. He comes to my page. And what's Keith doing, Ryan? Streaming, baby. Building trust. Oh, true. And then yeah, Ryan's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> I, I kind of like, like this guy. I like what he has to say. So no, that literally to me happened, for a few by minutes. the way. Like when I did go on your profile randomly and you were streaming. And so I clicked and I started watching it. So that literally did happen to me. 
I paused because I wanted to get the sound clip. So, so then you're like, oh, I kind of like this guy, maybe. And then you end up following me. And then tomorrow comes. Oh, man, Ryan, I'm just revealing my secrets to everybody. Tomorrow comes. Ryan's on, on LinkedIn. He's checking his stuff out at 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning. Boom. Oh, Keith pops up again. Hmm. Okay. Goes and watches a few more minutes. Building a little more trust. A few more days go by. The same thing starts to happen. Next thing you know, Ryan's like, Billis is not leaving. He's always here. Oh, I see his format. So, Ryan, as you went through your Howard Stern, Sirius, all these old school kind of things you brought over the last maybe 10 years of how we've consumed content, that's how I've decided to bring my shows to life. I've wanted to take a little bit of Rogan, a little bit of Leno, a little bit of Wolf Blitzer, a little bit of CNN, a little bit of everything from the past to bring it into the future, build trust, create entertaining content that is not boring. I purposely as a marketer, and you're a marketer, called it a show, not a podcast because I didn't want to get it lumped into a podcast, even though it's a podcast. I just purposely use that kind of terminology and I have fun poo-pooing my podcast friends. But as you were talking, Ryan, that was really the point of how I started the live in the lab. And then as I started people seeing people's habits, I was like, I'm going to start a morning show and see what happens. So Nicole Bernard knocks on my door and says, Hey, I need an accountability partner. I'd like one. I'm like, Hey, I'll be your accountability partner. And I'm like, would you start a morning show with me? She's like, sure. So we just showed up one morning, Ryan, and nobody came. Then the next day, a few people came. Then the next day, a few more people came. And now People are coming all the time. We've got these segments and all of a sudden it's 1985 again. And we have this morning show happening and, uh, and, uh, and, and you're going to, you're going to laugh at this. So let me show you this. This is, Oh no, I think I might've deleted it, but I, um, uh, we have a, uh, where did it go here? I thought I did. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's gone. Anyways. So that was the whole idea. And then I woke up after a few weeks, somebody kept saying to me, you're creating great content. Like, what's your goal? My goal is to create the biggest show on LinkedIn and YouTube around conversational content that's entertaining. In other words, I want to create the biggest talk show on LinkedIn and YouTube. So I stated my goal, and that's where I stand today. And then I'm like, I'm going to go ask Ryan. And there we go, Nicole. That's how the conversation went with Ryan. So that's how he discovered Nicole Bernard, and that's how he discovered Keith Billis. Mm-hmm. And I Over saw here. you. And I saw you nodding when I said, I saw you nodding. And I, and I saw John Swiston nodding when I used the word, we're building trust. Mm-hmm. Like we are, you and I are one big global news story away, frankly, happening during our morning show from building extreme trust. Mm-hmm. Because I will invite Business Athlete Nation and LinkedIn Nation to know that if big news breaks out, Nicole and Keith are going to break in and we're going to invite you guys in for the conversation. And then I'm not going to, I'm not going to go away. So ultimately, you know, something big happens during the morning or overnight, and we have a platform to discuss it and bring people together and have a global conversation. That is a true ambition of mine to bring this here to the show, because for me, Nicole, it's all about building trust. And when you show up every single morning with me and I show up every single morning with you and people are like, holy smokes, these people aren't going away. It's no surprise to me that you're networking, you're communicating with human beings is going up every single day because you're showing yeah. people that, yeah, I'm here. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. So let's uh, let's pivot over to our friend John Swiston, who is patiently waiting for us in the green room. And I saw him nodding as I was commenting on the fact that we are always here. John Swiston joins us, Nicole, from Manitoba. I'm in Winnipeg, downtown. Look, look at that. He's just down the road from old Uncle Keith. Just down the street from Headingley. Nicole, it's great to meet you. Keith, thank you for having me. Thank you both. You too. Absolutely. Good morning. Good we are, morning. We're going to do a creator spotlight with John Swiston this morning. I, uh, I uh, stumbled upon a post yesterday that John wrote and he talks about the challenge of Mondays. And I think that we all have a challenge with Mondays. doesn't matter if you're somebody <laughs> like climb mountains, do ultra marathons like Nicole or, or Christian Espinosa who, Hey, Nicole, Christian Espinosa, as we know, like he's, we got to get him to talk about all these ultra things because the guy just, yes. I think Christian Espinosa is going to go to Mars one day. I, I suspect Espinosa will make his way to Mars, and we're going to be talking about the in-between moment while Christian's sitting up on Mars. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm convinced of it. In his time zone? Exactly. exactly. In, in his time zone, yeah. Hey, John, do you know of Christian Espinosa? He was on my show last week there. The guy has done 3,800 ultramarathons, a Ooh. few thousand uh, uh, 
ultra something. The guy is exceptional. Wow. He's uh, almost died a few times. He is a human wow. being that if you haven't heard the show, you got to go check out my chat in between the moments with Christian Espinosa. I'm going to scroll back down through the feed and go find that one. That's awesome. Fascinating. John, you were nodding when I was talking to Nicole about building trust. You stumbled upon us when Anthony Mahai showed up on the show last week. And, and uh, I'm going to suspect now that, you, that you're connected with us, maybe we're becoming part of your habit. Am I wrong? Uh, I definitely see you in the feed every morning, and I've usually been tuning in for a little bit to, to check it out. So definitely nodding along, uh, showing up. And it's you know a big part of what I was writing about yesterday. And uh, you know we've got only a few levers to pull when it comes to building trust with folks, especially folks we want to build trust with, your audience. And yes. showing up on a regular basis and just being there is a big part of it. It's, it's tough to do. Yeah. So John, before we get, so here, listen, I'm going to do this right now. I want to get into, uh, so while I'm doing this, John, take a second to introduce yourself. So you're from Manitoba. You, you help finish my st sentence. You help. Boom. I help mid-market registered investment advisories build a fully diversified marketing portfolio uh, and transition to a modern, uh, you know, digital marketing operation. Your customers are? Yeah, registered investment advisories. Awesome. So mid, awesome. Mid, mid market RIAs. That's excellent. So here's John's profile. You'll go find him on LinkedIn. I invite you to go check him out. John, uh, John S. Swiston. As you see here, he's digital marketing for wealth management firms. He's located in Manitoba, but that doesn't mean he does business only in Manitoba. So if you need to go check out with John, I invite you to find him on LinkedIn. Uh, up and coming creator, doing some great stuff. But what jumped out for me, John, was this post right here which was let's talk about this one right here my friend mondays uh aren't for thinking mondays are for doing but what if you feel stuck and you talked about here's how i smash mondays without ice baths or wild regimes or supplements John, talk about your article here about how you smash mondays and give some incentive for somebody else who's struggling with uh, geez, how do I get through a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday? John, share some of your philosophies in today's creator spotlight with how you get through your Mondays. Sure thing. Thanks, Keith. I'll start with a caveat. I don't always smash Mondays. I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, I need to give myself a little bit of a reminder and, uh, I, I, I'm a really holistic thinker. It's a big part of the work that I do, you know, looking at the broader landscape and trying to connect a lot of dots. And so throughout my career, you know, I've always struggled with Mondays, as I think a lot of professionals do, uh, especially now as a family man and with, you know, infinitely more responsibility. Mondays can be really tough. You got to shift gears fast. So I've always just looked at Monday as a part of the week, a part of the month, a part of the calendar year. Uh, and what really started to work for me was like last decade. Uh, realizing that Monday was set long before Monday. Mm. Monday is set at the end of last week. Monday is set throughout the weekend with how you carry yourself. And Monday is definitely set Sunday night. Uh, so that's those are like the highlights of the post. You know, I just walk through kind of my ritual. And like I said, I don't always nail it. Uh, I falter often. And this post was as much to remind me, like, I know how to do this. Uh, I've done it before. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's really important to me to spend some time at the end of the day, Friday, I'm a heavy calendar blocker. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, especially in professional services, if you don't block your calendar, if you don't control your time, you know, you can get pulled a million directions at once. Like every day, my calendar's blocked till 10. I'm in the desk at six. I work till 10. Then after 10, great. If I get pulled a million directions at once by clients and partners and emergencies, then so be it. I got like at least a half a work day in, but when you're that quiet and you're that focused, you can often get a full work day in, in, in four to six hours. So it's that type of thinking that really helps set me up for the Monday, uh, Friday blocking that calendar at the end of the day is a really, really important ritual for me. Uh, and then it's really tough, uh, to unplug and to turn that work brain off. I'm, I'm honestly terrible at it. Uh, my work is all encompassing in, in many aspects, uh, and you know, my, my gears are just turning throughout the weekend often, uh, but I try to be deliberate uh, and bring the best that I can home to the family, you know, turn off the work brain 
And then Sundays, uh, my wife and I have definitely found that Sundays are critically important. Mm. She likes to start the week off. You know, she's home with the kids and she has noticed that a, a great Monday really sets the week up for success. And so, you know, it's tough. We, we say no a lot. Uh, and folks will often say, hey, you know, come over for a big dinner do or can we do this or can we do that? And yeah, we'll we'll bend often. But a lot of the times we look at that Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening and we say, hey, do we really want to put ourselves through the ringer on Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening? It's like, no, we want to spend time together connecting. We want to gear down. Uh, we want to build that quality time and then, uh, you know, get get in bed, get the kids in bed and and yeah, really set it up for a great sleep. Sleep being the foundation of health. Uh, I think all the research is is pointing in this direction. So, you know, a great sleep on Sunday night and then you're up and Adam ready to go on Monday. What better day to talk about Monday than on a Tuesday? We can all look back and see how do we do Monday? <laughs> yeah, well, so it's it's coincidental, ironic that you said that because I as I was setting up today's segment, I said, well, is it best we talk about this on a Monday? I thought no, because yeah. we can reflect yeah. upon this now. And what I like about this is that <clears throat> Nicole, John. Monday's coming up again. <laughs> it just next, keeps coming. Next six <laughs> days from now, it's going to come again. And yeah. I, I, so it's just like our taxes come every single year or a payment comes every single year. And sometimes we frantically can't get to it. So I like what, what struck me here, John, was your discipline around Monday is set on Saturday too. Yep. And Monday starts on Friday. You know, I, at the, as I'm wrapping up my Friday, Monday is starting. Like those are like, that takes a huge amount of discipline to just acknowledge, but if I'm reading between the lines of what you're saying, you're also saying that time blocking has been your magic tool. A big part of it, yeah. Talk about time blocking for you, John. Yeah, time blocking, I, like I'm holistic, it's, it's time blocking is big, the journal is big, the project mm -hmm. management software is big, and like all those tools put together in, in a toolkit, I found just, they just create a juggernaut. Um, I, operated in like a pre-COVID or a post-COVID manner pre-COVID. Yes. I was, I was doing business internationally and a lot of virtual video calls and, you know, interviews and client conversations. And uh, so I had had kind of figured out this, this style and this cadence. And a big part of it was calendar links, streamlining the booking process with folks that you're connecting with and wanting to talk to. And then so the corollary of that is if you want to put your calendar link out there to a bunch of people and say, hey, I'm not going to, you know, goaltend my calendar, grab the link, grab a slot, whenever it's convenient for you, we'll meet then the whole invite thing will be streamlined. If you're going to do that, you have to block the calendar. You have to yeah. look at the calendar. You have to create the recurring meetings. You have to say, this is what I want my week to look like. I want to be able to take meetings in these pockets and on these days. And I'm going to designate these other pockets for these other activities and responsibilities. Uh, so it was really important to figure out that dance and how to balance it. Uh, and it's been really interesting. You know, we help a lot of clients with CRM implementation and mm. modernizing their, their meetings and calendar booking software and such. Uh, and a lot of folks will give me some pushback. You know, I, I don't want to block my calendar. I don't want to put the calendar link out. Uh, you know, I, I, it seems like a lot to manage, but really once you get it set up and you figure out what your, you know, as close to optimal weekly cadences with the blocks and with what's happening with, with the requests on your time through the calendar links, uh, it can, it can start to work out really nicely. Exceptional. Great advice, John. I appreciate you uh, you sharing your Monday story with us, your Monday journey, how you smash Mondays, regardless if you're smashing it or not. You uh, are certainly uh, 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 having a conversation around it, which I think is uh, I think is, is, is much as much anything. It's, it's creating awareness that it, Monday's coming around the corner. And if you want to have success, you got to tackle Mondays, man. You got to you have to tackle Mondays is, is really, in my opinion, is the key. Right. So do you, hey, Keith, do you have any secrets, Nicole? Do you have any? Any habits for, for mastering that Monday? Nicole, what are your, what's your habit, kid? Um, sim Kind of similar, like on Sundays, I'll start to kind of take some time and think of my week ahead. But I actually really love um, the Friday afternoon block because 
I could see how that would really kind of take a lot of the mental kind of stuff that still goes mm -hmm. on in my head and like what I put off till Sunday to start doing. But if I did that Friday, I, I, I'm actually going to try that this Friday because um, I've never taken that time on a Friday to get all that out of my brain. Uh, and I think that'd be super helpful. Yeah. I me, Myself, John, I, uh, <laughs> you know what, to be frank, starting this new business every day seems the same to me. So uh, Mondays are the same as Fridays, are the same as Saturdays, are the same as Sundays. I am in a, uh, a, uh, a perpetual state planning the next day. And I'll be also honest with you, and Nicole knows this, uh, the, morning, the, the minute the morning show ends, the next morning show begins. It's actually quite incredible because, yeah. uh, it's because tomorrow, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning happens 24 hour, 23 hours later after this thing ends. And I've made a commitment to my nation to Keith and Nicole's nation here that uh, we're going to be here tomorrow. So it's been a whole new level of, okay, I guess I got to be prepared for tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> going to bed at a certain time, making sure the content is ready, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I will admit that I was scrambling this morning a little bit because I just wasn't as far along as I thought I was yesterday. And it's just still, even Nicole last week said she's still figuring out some of these new routines. Uh, I am proud just the fact that we're, we're showing up seven o'clock. It's eight o'clock Eastern, six, four, five o'clock Pacific time. Uh, sometimes not always perfect, John, but we're showing up. And I think that's just the most important part to have magic, right? So it's yeah, sure. Absolutely. And hats off. Like, it looks like you guys are crushing it. You seem very prepared. And uh, I love the systems, the systems approach, like to see yes. how yes. you configured everything, the Streamlabs mm -hmm. set up. And like, it's awesome. It's a lot of work on the front end, but now, you know, you get in the desk at whatever time and, you know, you've, That's done it. A, you've done a ton of the preparation already. And so, yeah, we're, we're, cer off. we're certainly trying. We're certainly trying. Oh, we got Ryan Sullivan tuning in. That's awesome. What's up, Sullivan? Yeah, yeah <laughs> that is awesome, man. I appreciate that. It makes me so happy, man. He's talking truth here. And he's talking, look at this. Hey, my favorite Mondays are Mondays and Fridays because, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, so cool. Ryan's also a rapper and he's a DJ. Oh, Ryan is one of the most awesome human beings I've met on the show. And I know that, Nicole, I told you back when I had you that you're my favorite guest. And, John, you might be one of my favorite guests, too. But, you know, everybody's a favorite guest coming here. Say, you throw that out there a lot now, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just love humans, Nicole. I no, just, you do. I just love human beings. Hey, as John, can you stick around for a few more minutes before we wrap up? I, I had a uh, I had a chat yesterday. Not a chat. I had. I was part of a conversation yesterday. Uh, you're a marketer, John. Nicole's a marketer, and I. Uh, Jack Appleby. I don't know Jack. Uh, he's he's clearly a well respected. Looks like a very successful entrepreneur, business person on LinkedIn. What's shaking, Jack? Love to have you on the show. But Jack made a comment yesterday during the eclipse, which was your brand social didn't need eclipse content. Your brand social didn't need eclipse content. Your brand social didn't need eclipse content, and it got a lot of activity. And I saw that, and I was like, no, I don't agree with that. I, I feel. And here was my post: Life these days, life just has too many rules. Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. And John, I know the world you work in. This is exactly the world you work in. Oh, you can't write about that. You can write about this. Yeah. So here's what I said. If you or your brand wanted to post about the eclipse because it happens only once in forever and it makes you happy, then post about the eclipse. It's simple. Just don't mm -hmm. look at it. And I said, there, thanks again for being in my uh, on my soapbox. And I don't know. I, I I built a social media company, been around the industry for a long time. I've been around for all those ill-advised moments when people post things during, I don't know, 911 or certain events of the year. The point I was just trying to make, Nicole and John, is that we uh we just we get so confined with rules. And I even headlined today's show, rules, what rules? I believe that yes, there's rules meant to be followed, but chart your own path. Yeah. Thoughts, Nicole, John? No, I totally agree with you. Um, and I, I think it, you know, it's taking that time to know what your brand is about and it does that fit in with with you and your brand. And then yeah, again, don't you don't have to listen to every single thing that everybody's saying. So that's exactly it. John, what do you think? Yeah, I, I saw that post and I have to say I agree with with your sentiment there, Keith. Uh definitely. I, I am not one to follow rules. I have to help people follow rules in my day job, uh, but I, I got a bit, a bit of a rebellious streak, maybe maybe too much sometimes. Uh, but 
And I don't know if it's so much about being rebellious, John. Yeah. And, and and I I I can appreciate the comment. Uh, for me, it's as much charting your own path, staying within yeah. your brand principles, brand values, and not being um, influenced by those outside voices. If you're so, I, I took a picture of the eclipse yesterday. You guys can see it. I posted it up there. I got my brand frame around it, and it wasn't so much about oh, I have to post about the eclipse. I said, you know what? I was like, this is going to happen once. And well, Nicole, you reminded me not that it happened. I was 100 years old, 1979. I figured, what the hell? I'm going to capture a moment, have some fun with this. For yeah. the only reason alone with three letters, fun. That's it. My brand well, is it's social. You're sharing your experience. You I go. mean, ah, there you go. Right. Yeah. So Nicole, you're bang on. That's that's where I was going to go with it, with, with uh, the positive argument for it. Right. It's like, right. like steel man it like it can be great. What are the things that connect us all that we all experience together as human beings? Like, yeah. it's not everything. There's a reason why LinkedIn for LinkedIn or is on LinkedIn does so well. It's because it unifies everybody here. Yeah. This is one of those things, right? And if so, you've got a brand about connection and shared experiences, then posting about the eclipse can be fantastic content for you. Smart comment, John. And it's funny to, you know, wrap up with this here is that I read a, a great piece. I don't know where I read this morning. It was at the Times or wherever it was. The eclipse brought together many Americans yesterday that typically yeah, yeah. would not have been hanging out together. You Huge. had red and blue and different races and different genders all getting together and pausing for two to three to five minutes or for a few hours to look up in the sky. Yeah. Magic. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. To watch the live streams, they had them stationed like all up and down that swath yes. that the total eclipse went through. And they would just jump from, you know, camera crew to camera crew. And you would just see Americans and Canadians, Niagara Falls and all sorts yes. of other places, mm -hmm. all walks of life, all coming together to just <clears throat> stand under the sun and stare at it with some weird ass glasses. Like, <laughs> like pretty cool. Pretty cool. That is all. It really is. It really is. Nicole, John, it's time for us to wrap it up. Uh, Mr. Swiston. Plug for you. Where can people find you on LinkedIn? Where can people find you on the internet? Where can people work with John Swiston who are looking for financial advisor, who are looking for some help? How can they contact, connect with you, John? Yeah, the best way is just hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, type in my weirdly spelled name over here. Uh, it's a strange <laughs> Ukrainian name that's difficult to pronounce. But uh, yeah, snag that. Type it in. Find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can book some time with me straight through my profile, check out some of our services through some of the featured links that we have on that page that I've got on that page. So yeah, that's the best way to connect. Shoot me a DM and uh, we'll go from there. Awesome. Nicole, what you got going on today, kid? Uh, running and meetings. Um, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about you? Excellent. What are you talking with today? I, I'm just putting it up right now. I am talking with oh. Sam Oblitz, the Gen Z genius. So <laughs> Sam started a company called Claim. Claim is a platform that essentially is a social network that aims to focus on real world value and communal experiences rather than manufactured content and repost. The startup was created in 2021. Uh, he's a former Yale person, former Harvard person. Uh, and and they, he ta Sam talks about, you know, taking offline, online stuff, but he's always said this. We saw this in Web3, and we see this in sports, which is collectibles. There's always been places where you can own something online, but there was no generalized form of it. So we started asking, what would it mean to remove all friction to actually owning something online? And that, over time, led to claim. So today at noon in the lab, I'm bringing Sam Oblitz. We're going to talk claim. We're going to talk... I want, I want to ask Sam... Nicole, John, because my kid Scott Carter is on his way to, you know, his next chapter in life. You know, maybe college, secondaries around the around the corner. I want to ask, uh, Sam. Sam. I forgot his name. I want to ask Sam whether, uh, hey, I'm authentic humans. We all forget <laughs> shit, man. And I'm like, I forgot his name. A uh, lot going on in that noggin, Keith. That's, 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 mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the appeal. I think people are like, oh, yeah. what's Bill is going to say next live on the air? Did he drop an F-bomb today on the show? No, <laughs> no he didn't today. I know. <laughs> well, that's what I was worried about. I was like, oh, I'm going to swear. I knew it. Oh, yeah, I gotta we need to have one of those like workplace countdowns, like how many days Keith goes without cursing online. <laughs> 
That's it. That's it. Do it. You have to do it now, please. Yeah, Sam's going to join us. I'm going to ask Sam about the value of Harvard. So if Sam had a kid yeah. today, would he send somebody to Harvard today? Because I don't know what it, I'm wondering if he's going to say to me, well, Keith, I think I might put my kid through entrepreneurship and go and give him a give him hundred grand to start a business instead of sending him to Harvard. Oh, Keith. Yeah. Can you ask him about Eric Weinstein's recent comments about Harvard on the Modern Wisdom podcast. Oh, I absolutely will. Yes, yes. Heavy, heavy comments. And uh, if he's a Harvard alum, he he may have seen it. So, uh, yeah, it's very, very interesting. I'll do that. All right, awesome. John Swiston, thank you for joining myself and Nicole here in the lab. We just hang tight in the green room for a quick second. I'm going to say goodbye with Nicole, and we'll uh, we'll walk you out. Okay, hang tight. Thank you. Thanks, everybody at home. Awesome. Nicole, another great show. I know, again, I say to you, I, I stress in coming to these things. I have all these lists of things that I'm not sure we're going to get through. And again, I didn't get through a bunch of things today. So uh, we didn't talk universal moon time. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Hey, tomorrow. I got to tease tomorrow. Uh, We've got Liz, right? I know. I know. Yes, exactly. So to those that don't know, we have somebody who's competing on this season's Survivor. She's on right now, right, Nicole? Yeah, she's still on it, too. Yeah. So, Liz, Liz, uh, how be? Liz Hybe. Liz, no, Wilcox. Well, well sorry. Yes, I, uh, Lori Hybe. Liz Wilcox is joining us tomorrow in the lab. She's a current survivor on, I'm sorry, she's a current survivor on Survivor. So, uh, Nicole knows her. Nicole invited her. And Liz is extremely busy. But she found a few minutes in her schedule to come join us in the lab. I sent her a video message uh, introducing myself, Nicole. She responded with a bunch of enthusiasm. So I know tomorrow is going to be exceptional. Yes. So tomorrow, everybody, Liz Wilcox joining myself and Nicole Bernard. Mornings in the lab with a special conversation around Survivor. Bring your questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And her energy with your energy, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, Nicole, enjoy your day today. I will talk to you on the text throughout. Have an awesome one. Nation, have an awesome day. Come join me today live in the lab at noon with, with Sam Obletz. We are going to talk claim, and clearly we're going to have some Harvard conversations. We'll see everybody. Have a great day. Bye.